Broadcasting from the creation of time to the end of the world. There is no freedom without the law. Who's not yours? This isn't the end, son. I know. Buckle up, baby. This ain't your grandma's Christian show. I done changed my life. You ain't got to say nothing. I am living for the Lord. It's time to get down and dirty on Change for That. And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Change for That, our season four, episode two. I am Chester Proctor. <laughs> are you sure? Yeah, sorry, I had our story queued up and it just started playing. You are? Kurt Doodle. <laughs> and the one and only Cedric Thrower. Thank you. Started something else. Yeah, but season. praise right, the Lord. Season. Reasons to praise God is the one and only. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, uh, it is, It's. It, you know what else it's hard to believe? Not only are we in a new season. Guys, we're November 5th. It is the 5th of November. It's my birth month. Remember, remember the 5th of November. It's my birth month, too. Gunpowder, treason, and plot. I see no reason why gunpowder, treason should ever be forgot. Okay. You made absolutely no sense. Oh, my gosh. You've neither nor, neither nor you know history. <laughs> or is this, uh, <laughs> neither nor you. That, is that Shakespeare? It? No. Hamlet? Neither nor you know history, nor you know the, uh, the uh, V for Vendetta. You haven't seen either one of those? What are you doing? You just want to burp on the air? You can't take Cedric anywhere. When is your birthday? November 23rd. Thanksgiving oh, Day. Mine's the year. 20th. Well, congratulations. Well, thanks. Yeah, so how yeah. old will you guys be? You first. I, okay, I'll be 40. Wow. I'll be the much younger 26. But I'm not going <laughs> to drink a 40. So, so would you... <laughs> That's good. Good. So would you like me to share with you uh, where the English folk verse from 1870, remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder, treason I mean, and plot? If you must. All right. Well, it was a traditional verse that exists in variations as they celebrate the foiling of the Catholic attempt to blow up the Protestant controlled England's House of Parliament on <laughs> November 5th, 1605. <laughs> that sounds like something we need to put into work now. You're like, what? <laughs> yes. What? We don't have parliament. Never mind. You want to blow was, up England's parliament? No, U.S. Congress. What? And senators. senators. <laughs> you can't say that. I didn't. You did. <laughs> I don't think we should we, air that. We do not endorse this. If you're listening, CIA. Wow. <laughs> wow. We're gonna no. get. We're gonna get visits. No, no. I'm it is a good thing that. no one listens to this show. Curtis it Tootle is. from Reedsville, Georgia, does not endorse what this Cedric message. <laughs> Neither does. Do Cedric not come thrower. tackle me in my, in my home. <laughs> and please don't tackle is me. I got a bad back. Is yeah. that helicopters I hear right now? Well, no, they're not that good. <laughs> <laughs> but you might. You might be hearing them right now. Oh, scares goodness. me if we should even air this show. All right. Uh, yeah. well, we're in it. So. If you hear this, listeners, <laughs> it's before they came. Chances are it's the last show we do because we'll be taken off the air now that Cedric has issued uh, a... Either that or it'll just be me and you next week. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> With Cedric missing. <laughs> again. As usual. Again. Again. <laughs> that happened during season three. Let's talk about that. Well, today on the program, we're going to try to keep uh, some level of, of dignity, although pretty much all of it's gone now, <laughs> as we take a look at uh, something that is a local, not a local, but a current event. And uh, we're going to go to ABC Action News for the story. So uh, your guys, you guys, your mics will stay live during this, but please don't talk, okay? All right, gotcha. Can you handle that? Thanks. Well, wait a minute. See, now that didn't work, <laughs> did it? Say something quick. You messed something it up. quick. Right now, some members of a Tampa church are telling us they are fed up because their church is sending them collection notices. And as ABC Action News reporter Cameron Polum tells us, they're venting that anger in a very public way on the church's Facebook page. People was very friendly there, you know, and I really enjoyed being there. Candace Peterson says finding the Greater Mount Moriah Primitive Baptist Church was a blessing. The single mother had been looking for a church closer to her new home, and six months in, things were going perfect. That is, until this letter arrived at her home late last week. It was from the church, saying she was delinquent in her financial support. $50 per month. Now, this shocked me, because I haven't heard about the $50 per month. So where did you get this from? Then Mount Moriah Day is on there, $150. The letter also says Peterson would be responsible for a church anniversary fee of $250, a total of $1,000 in required donations per year. Peterson says she was told the fees help pay off church debt. What church charged you to, you know, help pay off 
what they're going through. I'm not there for that. And many seem to be agreeing with Peterson, taking to the church's Facebook page to voice their concerns. A church administrator acknowledged the later came from them. They also told us the pastor was unavailable. We still left several messages and have not heard back. In the meantime, Peterson is searching for a new church. It's like you put me like, oh, if you want to be a member of this church, you need to pay this. Or if you want to find God. Yeah, if you want to find God. <laughs> that don't say anything about that in the Bible. And again, that was our Cameron Poland reporting. Peterson, meanwhile, says she has no plans to reach out to the church, and the pastor still has not responded to our calls. Well, of course the <laughs> pastor hasn't responded to your calls. I yeah. wouldn't be responding to your calls either. You just want to make him look bad. Yeah, the Bible says, do not entertain foolish questions. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's wanna... foolish. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I think the one, past... the oh, one question that we all want to know. <laughs> Who's the reporter? Did the letters work? <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah. Did everyone else send money in? We're going to implement this this so, week. So uh, I'm going to play uh, both sides of this coin, all okay. right? Because I'm going to tell you, I, I don't, and respond. Mic drop. <laughs> and I'm done. I just dropped the mic and walked out. Something's wrong with our system here. I uh, I, I think that um, the, the issue I have with this is obviously I don't think that the church should be sending out an invoice like that, especially if... Uh, and now a reminder if they ask for it might be a different thing. But again, that would be, have to be something that the church and the uh, people uh, that go to that church all are on the same page with before they ever join that church. Uh, but here's, here's what I want to say. Uh, if, you, if you were tithing biblically, if you were giving in a generous spirit to the church you attend to, your pastor and your churches would not have to. They're, I think they're wrong for what they did. But I do think that, that there are two wrongs here. And I think it comes down to she obviously must be a young believer or a non-believer with some of the things she said in that interview. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. She also went to Facebook and went public with it, and that's not biblical mm -hmm. either. And it does, by the way, madam, say, right. th say some things in the Bible about doing that. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. right. You're supposed to go to your brother. Right, you right. Go to the person you have the issue with. And you don't have to go to that church. I mean, they can't make you give that money. Uh, no. Okay? But, but understand something, and I'm very sensitive about this. The Bible teaches that Christians of the New Testament faith be a generous people, which mm -hmm. is to say that you should, if you commit to being a part of the mission and the work of a local body, mm -hmm. you should, that you call a church, you should be giving to it. I give mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. our church. Mm -hmm. I'm probably, and I don't mean this arrogantly, I'm probably one of the top givers. And I'm not so sure that the pastor ought not be one of the top givers for this and this reason alone, if financially they can handle that. Now, if somebody makes, you know, a million dollars a year, obviously it's going to be hard to top that, but, uh, or whatever. But, the reason I say this is because we are supposed to be setting an example, That's brothers. Right. Yeah. That's right. And so if we're not going to be generous, then how can we expect the flock to be generous? To whom much is given, much is required. and um, Much more. Much more. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the thing that was funny to me here, besides the, the voice of the reporter, is that um, – it, it, when she said, that ain't in the Bible. It don't say nothing about giving in the Bible. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I'm like, ma'am, yes, it does. Ma'am, you have not. You looked like, uh, <laughs> you looked like Dave, no. <sighs> oh, when I did like this? Yeah, you, yeah, you went, ma'am, <laughs> ma'am, you have not. There was an actor, I can't think of it, was a comedian, but anyway. Sammy Davis Jr.? No. Oh, okay. No, he didn't, anyway. he didn't see that coming either. Anyway. But, you know, I think, now, as far as the church sending her a collection letter, come on, people. Where did they do that at? So I know there's a. Where did they do that? At? Yeah, Tampa. I mean, other than there, I mean. You, oh well, I know of a church. You should not be doing it now. I know that there are some financial obligations that you may learn about during on um, new membership orientation. You know things that the church asks, but they can't require you to give anything because that's between you and you know your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah, I think asking for a specific amount, breaking it down like that is yeah. is out of the realm yeah. of biblical, right. you know, responsibility. But doesn't but, it say as a man purpose in his heart yes. so let him give? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But also if you claim to be a, a Christian, well, what you should be doing every day in your life is to strive as hard as you can and as much as you can to be like God in the flesh, which was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We serve a very, very generous God. There's generous, nothing reserved right. about him. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know that about God, that mm -hmm. he has prepared this for us outside of anything that we could ever dream or hear or see or think or feel, 
this is what he has in store for us. That's above and beyond That's anything right. that we ever need. Knowing that, why do we set the bar so low? So low. So super low when we know that this is what you, God has it, okay, in store for meaning, us. Okay, meaning, you're talking about focusing on the 10%? No, I'm, I'm not talking about even just financially. I'm talking about with our with with our dedication, with our commitment to Jesus, not just not just across. financially, just yeah. with everything. The yeah. bar we set for ourselves and for our God is low. I, I think it is because you know, especially when people harp on a certain dollar amount. Like for instance, you know how you may have a special program and they ask everybody to give twenty dollars or give fifty dollars. Well, what if I want to give one hundred and fifty? Mm-hmm. What if I want to give two hundred? Why are you limiting me? Well, you know how I would handle that is I would come in and I agree with you. And I would say I would say in order to reach our goal, we figured out that everyone needs to give twenty dollars. But if you want to give more than that, then, of course, that will help us get to that goal faster. And we also realize that some of you may not have that to give or you may give less give than that. What you can. So we're just talking about the median, the average yeah. here, I mean, know, or the we, mean, rather. When you average. explain it like that, it makes the person feel better. Because right. not everybody is used to no um, church protocol. Yeah. Church, at this, we got a generation of people that are unchurched. The biggest generation is the millennial generation that's coming in, right? And they have no idea. Some of the stuff we be talking about, the doors of the church now open, they have no idea what you're talking right, about. Right. You know, the invitation uh, to discipleship or things of that nature, they have no idea. So when you start talking about fifty dollars for it. It may be the way she interpreted the letter. Well, the, and I saw you know I saw a copy of the letter, and you guys didn't have the luxury of seeing that video, but I saw a copy of the letter. The the it was broken down very business like and very much like you owe this money you got to pay this money or find another church. Oh, I mean it wow. was very much in your face and, and again that's wrong. that is wrong that's and wrong. that very that hurts wrong. all churches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now there's a church up in North Georgia that I was at uh, did a wedding at years ago, and this church has a f- beautiful uh, campus. Uh, they have a nice big wedding chapel, which is only for weddings mm. uh, that you can book, and, and you don't even have to have be you know don't have to be affiliated with the church. You can just book it for weddings. You have to pay um, though, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's a booking fee and all that kind of stuff, but um, but then there's other areas you can use of the campus, and and so I got to kind of tour around at, before the wedding and look at different areas of the campus, and one of the people on staff toured me around, showed me stuff, um, and and a family member was attending the church, and he told me that. That, that they really love the church, the thing they have to get used to is that they ask you to give a copy of your W-2s at the end of the year, and then or your W-4, W-4 at the end of the year, and it shows how much you made, and then they give you a percentage, 10%, that they tell you, okay, you've given X amount, so you are this much short or this much over or this much, un, you know, or you're right on. And, and with that, to continue membership, you have to agree to make that, excess payment so that you can have given you know, at least 10%. Somebody told me about a church that was doing that, but it, is it a, a multicultural church? or Well, at the size it, that it is, it probably is. Mm-hmm. But if you're asking, is it one specific cultural church? No. Okay, but is the pastor African American? No, I don't know that because I never met the pastor. Okay. And that's been many years ago. I'm from, uh, you know, I'm familiar with a story like this. I don't want to call any names on air, but there is a ministry that I'm familiar with. Lo- where, like in our in, area? In Atlanta. Oh, in Atlanta? Oh. Yes, North Georgia is the Well, this one, asking. and you know what? This is not in Atlanta. This one's over in uh, the, uh, uh, well, it may be one of the suburbs. I forget exactly where it was. Yeah, it's been so yeah. long. I've, now, heard, but, I've heard of a pastor that, but he. But I bet he he's was, not the he, only one. He was under yeah. investigation, though, a couple of years ago. You may know. Yeah, I do know. What he's talking about now, but that, that was wasn't one, that wasn't the church. Okay, it was one of the requirements of membership. Right. You know, you can come and attend all you want to, but if you are a member, you join. then you have to submit. And see, I think I think the idea is correct. I think the method is wrong. And here's Hold what I mean: accountable. Yeah, here's what. Yeah, if you're going to join the church, then you you have a responsibility. If you're going to sign up as a committed member of this church, you have a responsibility. You're saying that you want people to speak into your lives and hold you accountable in this church, and you're going to do the same, and you want to walk hand in hand as we do ministry together. That still doesn't mean that if you join my church, I'm not checking tithes and going to come get you. Well, where is the Holy Spirit involved? Well, Isn't that his job to... Well, that's true, but my job. Person on your heart, but my you know, job. The word and but my teaching. job by Ephesians four eleven is to equip the saints for works of the ministry. Right. So if my job is to equip you as a church member, then you joining, you're giving me authority to speak into your life. Okay, so, I can see that. So point let's too. say you I can see that. So let's say you come in and you say, but now here's how I handle it. But I, I want to be clear because I, I don't want people I not to come be, to my church because I wouldn't this. be asking for W twos. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't agree rem- with that. Remind you. Yeah, yeah. I don't agree with that. And I, and I don't. Remind, here's how I handle it. You come into my church and you you join the church and you never give. You're not going to hear a phone call from me. 
you're not going to get a phone call from anybody because we're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. If you're a deacon, you're going to get a phone call. Leadership. Uh, yes. If you're on a leadership, mm-hmm. high leadership position, you're going to get a phone call. You're going to have a meeting about that. Um, or if you come in and sit down and you talk to me because you have financial trouble, the first question I'm going to ask you is, are you a tither? How are you giving? How's your generosity? <laughs> yeah. Because you can't, you can't expect God to continue to bless if you're not giving. But I've told our church the same thing. I just recently proposed our financial budget for 2018, and it involves giving a certain specific amount that we have in savings to doing some ministry work. And I told them, I said, we don't need to well, sit here. Goal. We don't need yeah. to sit here and pray that God will fill it the coffers when he keeps saying, but He's I filled fill the coffer. Us. Well, yeah. he says, I already filled your coffer and you put it in savings. <laughs> yeah. Go spend that money. Yeah. Well, he said he'll give seed to the sower. And if you never sow, he can't give you more seed. Well, that's true. That's true. Or he's not going to. He's not going he to. He could. Because he can. To. He's just not going to. So let's be right. clear. Uh, no to the W-2s. No to the no. invoices. No. Definitely something you need to walk with God on. Yes. Follow the Holy Spirit. Problem is, people don't follow the Holy Spirit. Change for that. Problem. We'll be right back. Change for that is made possible without commercial interruption by Gigi's Landscaping. Back to the show. Change for that. Okay, so sorry. We talked right into the close there before the break and uh, <laughs> timed it out and everything still messed it up. Uh, but I want to be clear that we don't expect anybody to turn in W-2s. We don't expect anybody to uh, do all that kind of stuff. None of us are saying that's Absolutely right. Absolutely not. All right. Question comes from a listener. Came to Cedric this time, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Mm. So uh, hashtag ask Cedric, hashtag share with us, hashtag thanks. <laughs> KK, thanks, bye. And, and that's exactly how it came. <laughs> with a bunch as, of hashtags? Hashtag ask Cedric, and then it, it was in my inbox. Gotcha. You know, about have Christians having a balanced life. Mm-hmm. You know, can a Christian go to church too much. Hmm. I mean, it's it's something to think about. Let me give you an example like what she gave. She said, okay, picture this. Sunday morning, Sunday school. Morning worship. Evening service. Monday, you go to work. Monday night, you're in revival. You're going to church. Tuesday, back to work. Tuesday night, you're in church meeting, choir rehearsal. Wednesday, You go back to work Wednesday night, Bible study. Thursday morning, you're back to work. Thursday night, children's church, children's choir rehearsal or or some sort. Friday, and so forth and so on. So every week, you're just going through the motions of all these programs and meetings and nothing but work in church, work in church. Where's your family time? Where's your you time? In the car on the way to church. (laughs) You know, and I I thought about it, and I was like, wow. Wow. Well, you know what we do? We do, and Kerp may have been with us at Smith Street when we started doing this, but what what we do at our church is we try to limit everything, unless you're on leadership. Now, if you're on a leadership role of some sort, you're going to be giving more time than this. It's just inevitable. But with with the majority of our general membership or a congregation, not even just members, but congregations, we're probably not going to get folks to attend church more than three hours a week. So we want to get them there for Sunday school, for main worship, and we try to get them there sometime on Wednesday night for some type of Bible study, or mm-hmm. which which I do especially. And we do we do that hour, and I start Bible study in the con- in the uh, sanctuary with the congregation, and I go start I start at seven promptly at seven. We pray, we stream our service, so it's got to start right at seven. We pray, and then at seven thirty we end it. And right now I'm doing a chronological Bible study, which is which basically I'm just preaching through the Bible chronologically and giving them readings every day to do. We put it in our bulletin, and then we come back in, and, and I teach over that week's worth of reading. And um, and at 7.30, we get prayer meeting from 7.30 to 8. So you still get that one hour. You're getting two mm-hmm. things in there, but you're still getting that one hour. And that's because people, and honestly, even though I think three hours is, is pathetically low for what we should be giving right. as as members of churches, but at the same time, I don't know about you guys, but I have a lot of people who don't even give three hours. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's, that's right. They don't even get the three hours. Yeah. So I would say that what you're describing, that she's describing, may sound like a little bit of overcommitment on a program side, not a spiritual issue. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And see, that's what we got to be careful about because uh, I find out, you know, observing local churches, communities, and things that everyone have going on is all these programs. You yeah. Know, all these different day non biblical days that is taking a lot of time from people from their families, you know, time that they could be spending, you know, um, ministering and being a priest of your home, you, you're doing something that has nothing to do really with anything. Now I understand that if a word is given at their program, it's always going to be beneficial to the people. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, where is your personal time with him? Hmm. Well, I think yeah. if, if you look at it, the the umbrella or the scope of things, if you look at it, should be your relationship with God, right? your relationship with, with your, your wife. That's right. Then your kids. Right. Then the church. Then the church. And I think that 
sometimes we get so bogged down. I, I, and maybe I'm speaking more from a pastor's perspective with this, but like right now I have Sunday school, mm-hmm. Sunday morning worship, mm-hmm. Sunday night, mm-hmm. Wednesday night, mm-hmm. Thursday night men's uh, See? ministry. That's five things that I have to prepare and preach in one week. Yeah. And that can get overwhelming sometimes. See, and I have to watch myself. Well, not only are you speaking from a pastor's perspective, you're also speaking from a man's perspective because you said right. wife. But yeah, let me, let me, and it also, could be a yeah. woman, you know. And married. then you got yeah. work. Well, yeah, you that's you true. haven't even started with your, your job. Yeah, that, that's You know, just your the responsibility yeah. on your job. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let me clarify. And, and for, as a full time pastor with, with a lot more time to do things, but not, not any more time than anybody else, but more yeah. time to do things. Uh, I had overloaded my plate, and I do this every year on purpose, but I overload my plate with, teach, with, <laughs> with teaching. So what I ended up doing was teaching an 8 a.m. new members class, uh, 8 a.m. discipleship group with mm-hmm. men. On Sunday morning. On Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. A 9 a.m. new members class, a 945 Sunday school, 11 o'clock service, and then Wednesday night service. You know, and, Chester, that's a lot. And, and what it ends up doing is it ends up putting the rest of my week with some basic administrative de- stuff that I have to do. But it puts the rest of my week in studying for those classes, which it's just preparation, 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 preparation. And if you're going to do that, you've got to put in some time to it. Yeah. And some things didn't get nearly – like the new members class didn't get nearly as much study as – oh, and then on Tuesday nights for six weeks I was teaching that, that class. That's so, right. so that was that. a lot there, which – which I will say that I'm going. I'm doing it differently as we go into 2018. I'm going to structure it differently so it doesn't. But at, at one point, I was doing seven teachings a week, and then, and then every now and then I'd be teaching it, preaching but at a school I, or something, you know, in the area at one of the private schools or something like that. I just so. think it's important that we uh, t- we teach this because I believe, you know, statistically, if I'm not mistaken, the divorce rate is higher in the church than it is in the world. Mm-hmm. Why, I don't know, but know, wouldn't I mean, surprise I mean, me. I mean, yeah, I mean. Why is that? Because I think sometimes we don't know the order, God's order. Well, I think Does also it, we're we're kind of taught that, well, not really taught, but we're shown this through example that the church, quote unquote, is the building that we go to. Right, and it's not. And it's, it's not. Right. It's not the people. It's not the followers of Christ, and that's completely wrong. You can spend a you can spend all your week in the church and not do anything that the church is supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and there's good. no evangelism or discipleship or anything like that going on. You're just mm-hmm. going to a, a bunch of programs. You're just and, going to a bunch of programs, and yeah. it's not doing you well, any good. And Rick Warren, and whether you like Rick Warren or not, Rick Warren wrote the book years ago, Purpose, purpose Driven, Driven Church, church. Yes. and and that drives the point home, which is we need to be purpose driven, not not program driven. Right. right. Um, right. and, and I don't get so caught up in that that I don't use the term program. I try not to, but I don't because we're not program. But here's how we answer the question in our leadership um, to determine whether or not we're program vision or purpose driven. I mean, mm-hmm. program driven or purpose driven. And that is we ask the question, why? Why are we doing this? Why and then are we, we ask, doing this? How are we reaching? Yeah. What's yeah. our mission? Our mission is loving God, loving people, and making disciples. That's then right. everything we do needs to fall inside of one of those three Has categories. To. That's right. And if we're not, then we're outside of the realm of God's vision for this church. Oh wow, that's so, good, Chester. So that well, and it's and it, to God be the glory because that's how God has allowed us to narrow our focus on what He wants us to do. And then sometimes we miss the mark. Sometimes. We're human. Sometimes we, we get out there, but we'll start getting something together, and somebody on a leadership team or something will say, wait a minute, we haven't asked why. What? And the whole thing comes crumbling down like the walls of Jericho, but it's a good thing because we don't want to go forward if God's not blessing it. Well, here's the thing. I have seen both sides, and, and, I, and I'm going to say this because you know I am black, and I, and I do go what? to a majority what? black I didn't know church. this. Okay. Gosh, we, I don't see those things. We, I had no clue. We are multicultural because we have other races in our church, but the majority of us are black. Right. And what I have seen, the different, I've been a member of a majority white church before and what I, and I enjoyed it, but let me tell you why, because they taught on more than just the Bible. They talked about finances. They talked about education. They talked yeah. about Christian education. They talked about um, insurance and you know, it was, it was like they, they well, taught you so many things about building wealth, about, you know, entrepreneurial spirits and, and gave us. Now, they paralleled it to the Bible. Sure, sure. It all has you biblical know, roots. It all have biblical roots. Yeah. And it's about, you know, how to achieve that abundant life. You know, that but God I think that's important because us. we I try to do that because we're dealing with the whole person, the whole person, we're dealing with more than just the spirit, the mind, the, the soul, mind, the, the body. We're dealing with all yes. of it. So. And that's what Jesus did. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. That's what he did. Absolutely. You know? And it goes back to our first segment. We're talking about tithing. If we were doing that and talking about how to be a good steward of the biblical of the finances biblically that you have, 
in your home, not in your in the church, in the mm-hmm. home, in the home, then That's you right. would you would be able to apply the, the the biblical principles and giving generously would become a part of your life, not something the church is asking you to do, but something you're, you're looking forward to doing. That's right. Um, it's the it goes back to the ten ten eighty rule, which I mentioned a million times. Ten ten eighty. Uh, 10 minutes, not 10 minutes, but 10% to God, 10% to Just your savings, off. and then yeah, and then 80% to live, live on. on. Yeah. Right. And honestly, I'm trying to get the church to a 10 10 80 rule, and we're not there. We're at over just a little over 10% on our givings, on our mission work, but on our putting on our savings, we're un, we're way under that because we're actually living closer to like a 10 3 9, 87 or <laughs> whatever that <laughs> 10, three, eight, seven. What? 3% to the church, 10 to yourself. No, 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 no. 10. <laughs> what we do is we do 10%. We're doing a little more than 10% to local mi- to mission across oh, the world okay. I got you. local uh, we do an acts 1 8 plan which is you know jerusalem judea samaria the ends of the earth and then we we focus on um the, then there's money that goes into savings mm-hmm. we we pull out this is my plan if they approve it we pull out x amount of dollars at the beginning of 2018 mm-hmm. and we list that as our as our as our outreach no 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 it, it works as a specific what we're going to do specific okay. like building okay. fixing the building painting things like right, that right and we use that money out of savings and then we put money back in every month we're not going to put it all back in, but we put some back in every month to try to build that back up so that next year we can pull can out money again, again and put that's something right. into something else up here under that's our uh, that's the paying ourselves under the paying our missions mm-hmm. that missions category has about ten and a half percent of our annual budget, which is going to go towards uh, the outreach, the local community events, the the statewide stuff, our associational stuff, the international yeah. missions, yeah. those That's kind good. of things. So, That's good. So that now we'll see. Now it's time for I'm Christians a, to have a balance. I'm in a Baptist church, which means the finance team still has to approve that. <laughs> yeah. The church has to approve that. Yeah, but you know, so. but don't you think Christians need to have a more balanced life? And I think it would yeah. they wouldn't feel so miserable. And you know, people come and give their life to Christ or afraid to give their life to Christ because they feel like they have to give up everything. And he said his yoke is easy. And his burdens are light. When you start feeling burdened, that's not of God. No, and it's like, I'll, I'll sum it up like this. It's like the person who comes up to me as a pastor and says, Pastor, I want to be in the, uh, I want to work with the youth ministry, but I also want to sing in the choir. And both those events are taking place, practice taking place, same time, the youth ministry. Then I look at them and say, which one's God leading you to do? Because he's not leading you to do both. That's right. I mean, I don't one think he has is. to take precedence. Right. I think he's over. leading you to one or the other at this yes. church. If he either that or, he, or we're missing yeah. a schedule issue. I just gave God up is. singing in the choir. It's tough. Recently. You can come it sing was, in our it, choir. It was time to. <laughs> I, I need to focus more on ministry. Kurt needs a, Kurt needs a minister of music, so you can go sing at his church. I'll Doesn't send my son, much, Damien. But, but I need one. Well, I'm used to making nothing here at the show. Well, so. that's right. It's, he'll make more than he it's does for, here. It's for the Lord. For the Lord. <laughs> hey, uh, Ides of uh, not Ides of March, but fifth of November, guys. Remember, remember the fifth of November. Remember. All right, we got to run. Have a check us out on Facebook and uh, become an insider. Keyword of the month is uh, the week is November. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Change for That. We are so over. Fine by me. We'll catch you next time. Don't leave me.